For the most part, we all enjoy giving gifts, especially to those that we love. A lot of us are generous givers, even to those we hardly know or don't even know. You're generous with this church, with your children, with all sorts of different charities. Jesus said in Acts 20, 35, giving draws our hearts to Christ. It is better to give than to receive. Well, since Jesus said that, he said it's better to give than to receive, I will definitely take him at his word. But I must, must tell you, it is very good to receive also. I can't think of a more generous gift to give someone you love than the gift of time spent with them. In the hustle and bustle of today's pace, it's hard to spend quality time like you want with family, friends, and with Jesus. Our Creator, in His great wisdom, knew this was going to be a problem, and His desire to spend with us was so great that in the very first six days of creation, He made a plan to have quality time with us, His greatest creation. Genesis 2, 1 to 3 says, the heavens and the earth were finished, and on the Sabbath day, the seventh day, he rested from all his work. He sanctified that day, sanctification meaning he set it apart for a holy purpose. What was that purpose? I was born in Long Beach, California, and I grew up in L.A., my dad was a first-generation Christian. That's right, a Christian. Not just a Seventh-day Christian. My dad never attended church, and growing up and serving God was never talked about in his home. At 20 years old, he left his Nebraska farmland and moved in with his oldest sister in Fresno, California. His sister introduced my dad to the Bible, to Jesus, and to the Sabbath. Sabbath keeping was a new way of life for him. He was married to my mom at age 25. She was also a new Seventh-day Christian. And 75 years ago, even this great church was strong on rules and works. Oh yes, grace was taught. But actions were, as they are now, very important. I'm not sure the concept was clear that when God rested, it wasn't because he was tired. He wasn't exhausted. Isaiah 40, 28 says, God never gets tired. Imagine that. Anyway, Dad did his very best keeping Sabbath holy, the best way that he knew how. Every Friday night at sundown, when the street lights came on, I knew I had better be inside for sundown worship and song. On Sabbath, we always went to Sabbath school and church. Mom always had a great meal prepared, and we often had guests over for lunch. Dad loved the great out of doors and God's creations. And trust me, L.A. had a lot going on. We would go to the beach, Point Furman, and collect shells, play on the rocks, and do our best to stay dry above our ankles. We would go to Forest Lawn and see the great Last Supper painted by Leonardo da Vinci on stained glass. We would go to Descanso Gardens the greatest botanical gardens anywhere. The Arboretum, where the original Tarzan was filmed. Griffith Park, an observatory, 4,210 acres of fun in nature. Hollenbach Park in Boyle Heights, more than 120 years old, and many, many more things. We were most always home 
at Sabbath sundown for worship and song. I admit these are great memories and wholesome things to do. Besides, they were all free back then. I'm sure my sister got the sanctified Sabbath rest part. She was, after all, four years older. But to be honest with you, I missed the worship part and focused on the going and doing part. I'm not saying going and doing on the Sabbath is wrong, but let's just look and see what God really had in mind when he said, a day set apart for a holy purpose. In this day of secular, materialistic ways of thinking, sometimes it's hard to remember what our Creator really had planned for us. Let's read Revelation 4.11 together. Brought my Bible. Revelation 4. Eleven. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. To receive glory and honor and power. Wow. It's great to visit the things of nature, but even greater to give thanksgiving to the maker. Just think, he allows us to give him glory, honor, and power. Absolutely, positively, the greatest gift the Father gave to us was his son, Jesus. Jesus saves us from our sins. Jesus not only gave us a wonderful place to live, he also gave us a day to rest with him. He called it Sabbath. How wonderful it is to call upon our Savior, our Creator, our gift giver. So how do we thank the Creator of the world, the Savior of our souls, the one and only true God for giving us the unselfish gift of rest? Exodus 28 gives us the answer. Remember. Exodus 31, 13, Jesus said, Surely my Sabbath you should keep as a sign between me and you throughout all generations so you may know that I am the Lord who purifies you. Jesus clearly tells us he made the Sabbath for man. He did not make man for the Sabbath, Mark 2, 27. What a God. He created us. Then on the very next day, he gave us a birthday gift. To all, starting with Adam and Eve, God gave us the Sabbath as a gift, way before it was the law in Exodus 20. So here's the question. If we, don't, if we don't take the gift of Sabbath and enjoy it, can we still get the gift of Sabbath joy? No other day was blessed by God or set aside as holy. Please note that when God rests, it's an example for us. So how does God rest? Isaiah 58 says, calls the Sabbath a delight and comes with the promise that if we honor God on Sabbath, he himself will grow increasingly in us to be our delight. So he's our delight. That's how he rests. He will renew our strength in us. The Lord will bless his people to rise above all obstacles. He will protect us and keep us out of the reach of danger. The Sabbath is a sign between God and his professing people. Jesus made the Sabbath to show favor to us. He will sanctify your needs. You will be like a well-watered garden. You will find your joy in the Lord. 
Here we are this morning resting in Jesus, right? By being together, worshiping the one and only true God. Even while Jesus was on earth, his close friends and many more kept Sabbath. The Sabbath is Christ's great sign of loyalty. It is a sign of his creative power. On this day, Christians have an invitation to enter into close union with the master. It is a training, if you will, for time spent in the kingdom with Jesus. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23 tells us about the Sabbath in heaven. It will be restored to be like it's, it was back in Eden. We will walk and talk with our creator. Even though we'll be able to fly, Joshua, we're gonna fly at the, faster than the speed of light and go as far as we wanna go, wherever we wanna go on Sabbath, we will be back at the feet of Jesus, the greatest storyteller, the preacher, our best friend who had ever existed. Psalms 86 and Revelation 15 tell us about that. So here we are, March 2023. We look forward to Sabbath to meet with our Creator, whether we're here in church or not. We start our day in prayer. We plan in whatever we do or think to include Jesus like all other days. But today, Sabbath, we especially ask him to join us in planning how to spend time with him and thank him for providing the activities for pleasure with him. This requires a different mindset from our weekly, daily duties that are essential. This mindset will soften our hearts and will ensure us joy in resting in Jesus. Meeting in God's house, a building or in the great out of doors, fellowship with each other and Jesus is wonderful. Hiking, swimming, sightseeing, etc., etc. Do it to the glory of God. Why to the glory of God? Because God is worth it. Okay. I'll just hit on a few things that maybe will be different and fun on the Sabbath. I'm doing that. I'm doing this for those of us who might not be creative as others and say there's nothing to do on Sabbath. Of course, this is just a very short list. For those of you who were here last week, you heard that if you were a blind man, and Jesus spit on the ground on Sabbath. It was a good thing. Thank you, Ray, I appreciated that. Of course, the first thing, number one on the list would be, of course, on Sabbath, you should pray. Go to church, inside or outside. Go geocaching, rocking, if you please. Color a pretty picture. List 10 of your favorite foods. Relook at family pictures. Create a Bible scene. Study a Bible text, Sabbath school lesson. Visit your neighbors or some are homeless or someone in jail. Visit, um, have a picnic, invite someone that's different. Make a banner for Sabbath school rooms, play an instrument or spoons. Play a Bible word building game, rest. Use the church library. Tell others a nice Bible story. Decorate a jar for saving God's money. Make shadow pictures, write letters, set goals, knit, sew something nice. Have a puppet show like we had this morning already. Did I say rest? Okay, these are things to do while always stopping to remind yourself of those you and those you love 
This is how we spend time with each other and Jesus. I know this will take adjustments for some. Yes, I know we need to re uh, refrain or retrain our minds on what is important. Yes, I know there is discipline in serving Jesus, but the rewards and joys are really, really worth it. And spending time with Jesus should be, if it isn't already, a strong desire and great pleasure, fun, happy, rewarding, satisfying. Spending time with Jesus should be natural daily and Sabbath extra planning to enjoy being with our Creator who truly loves us. Start Friday night and Sabbath morning telling Jesus you want to spend time with Him. Ask Him to make it a purposeful time. Have heavenly thoughts. Plan to talk with your loved ones about ways to focus on heavenly fun things to do. God never said, thou shalt not have fun. Having good time is not a sin. Just remember Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God. When we're relaxing or having fun, seeking entertainment, we should always make sure the activity is pleasing to God. Recreation means to recreate or renew. Plan to recreate your faith in Jesus. Imagine spending time with our Creator, our Savior, our God. He purposely set apart a very special time just for that. Now, that, oh, not that we shouldn't be in contact minute by minute, hour by hour, and day by day, especially take time to be with God on the day that was set apart, especially for us. How do we live a day set apart? Know that your identity is in Jesus. Have the courage to be unlike others, different. Let your light shine for all to see. Guard your eyes and ears from worldly influences. Continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. Now that's just five ways to set apart. It's worth a lot more, and there are a lot more, and they're worth more than rubies and pearls. Think differently, act differently. Choose a special purpose to bring life, light, love into this dark world. Yes, for all of us, our mindset needs to change. Our timing needs to change. There is not one among us who can say, I spend time perfectly with Jesus. Fortunately, our time is made perfect through Jesus. Jesus so dearly wants more than anything, our time. When we do give our time, very soon our hearts will be changed. If you do spend time with Jesus now, think about how fabulous it will be face to face in heaven. In closing, I would like to read just one page from Ellen G. White's book, Jesus, Name Above All Names. I, I would ask you to please give me your attention because this is a very good writing. I could have read this page and then sat down, but then I wouldn't have earned my pay. Don't look surprised. Yes, I get paid, not in gold and silver or paper. I may not get as much as Wayne or Stephen or Ray but I'm rich rewarded through your, your prayers and your smiles. Page 193, Jesus, name above all names. 
as the Sabbath was a sign that distinguished Israel when they came out of Egypt to enter the earthly Canaan, so it is a sign that now distinguishes God's people as they came out from the world to enter the heavenly rest. The Sabbath is a sign of the relationship existing between God and his people, a sign that they honor his law. It distinguishes between his loyal subjects and transgressors. From the pillar of cloud, Christ declared concerning the Sabbath, Verily, my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that Lord that does sanctify you. The Sabbath gives to the world a sign of God as your creator is also the sign of him as the sanctifier. The power that creates all things is the power that recreates the soul in his own likeness. To those who keep holy the Sabbath day, it is a sign of sanctification. True sanctification in har is harmony with God, oneness with him in character. It is received through obedience to those principles that are the transcribed of his character. And the Sabbath is a sign of obedience. He who from the heart obeys the fourth commandment will obey the whole law. He is sanctified through obedience. To us, as to Israel, the Sabbath is given for a perpetual covenant a never ending or never changing covenant. To those who reverence the Holy Sabbath day, it is a sign that God recognizes them as the chosen people. It is a pledge that he will fulfill to them his covenant. Every soul who accepts, who accepts the sign of God's government places himself under the divine everlasting covenant he fastens himself to the golden chain of obedience, every link of which is a promise. The fourth commandment alone of all the ten contains the, re the seal of the great lawgiver, the creator of the heavens and earth. Those who obey this commandment take upon themselves his name and all the blessings it involves are theirs. I hope you enjoyed that, and I know everyone here is I'm preaching to the choir. Everyone here keeps the Sabbath. They're here, and uh, it's a blessing. It's been a blessing to me through my life. I never understood it as much as I do now, and I guess that's why the Lord allowed me to live to be an old man. <laughs>